Your Natchez History Minute is brought to you by Natchez National Historical Park. In 1859, architect T.K. Horton of New Orleans described the landscape of Melrose as looking all the wood like an inch park, with the main house being flanked by grand forest trees stretching away on either side. Soon after they purchased the property in 1841, John and Mary Louise McMurray began transforming the used up old cotton field into the romantic landscape that visitors enjoy today. In addition to a vegetable garden and an orchard, the property boasts both former and informal gardens, containers, grass and walking paths that last strollers past ornamental blooming shrubs. John McMurray transplanted mature varieties of evergreen, oak, tulip poplar, and magnolia trees. Mary Louise had a love of camellia as well as seasoned bugs, such as tulip and hyacinth. In addition to the camellia, the ground featured gardenia, crepe myrtle, and sparrow. In 1909, George Marlon Davis Kelly and his wife, Elton, made Melrose their prominent home, and they improved the landscape, introducing azalea and lining the walkway with mountain grass. Elton Kelly planted iris beneath the McMurray cherry lard hedge that lined the former drive to the front porch. In 1940, she also restored a former Bateria garden as a surprise for her husband, who was in failure health. Later on, John and Betty Callum enlisted the aid of notable landscape architect Bill Garbo to preserve and restore the Melrose landscape. Today, the National Park Service maintained the historic garden of Melrose for the thousands of annual visitors who come to view the magnificent estate. Hi, I'm Larry Stewart. I'm standing in front of the Governor Mutant Camellia. I'm the head gardener at Melrose. This has been your Natural History Minute.